Hobbies are a great distraction, especially in those 10 days you're waiting for that pregnancy re test result to come back. Um, countless studies have shown that re that uh, hobbies not just reduce stress, but also bring happiness and express creative creativeness, improves various skills, including problem solving skills, um, gives you something to look forward to doing every day, a sense of purpose, improves uh, quality of sleep, and builds self-confidence. So while going through all this, I occupy my uh, free time with genealogy, and now it's gotten to the point where it's, it isn't just a hobby anymore. It, it could lead to a possible career option. They say if you love what you do, you will never work a day in your life. And that's a goal I'm trying to shoot for. I have a degree in history. I decided and decided not to become a teacher. I applied at countless museums and libraries and never got any offers. So perhaps my little hobby may be a path to what is what I, was meant to do and sites that my education was not in vain as it was the right choice for me as uh, as it was what my heart had been telling me all along. Um, keep busy, especially those 10 days after the transfer, you will take a 10 days after the transfer, you'll take a blood test that will determine whether you're pregnant or not. And it's a long 10 days. So it's important to make those days go by fast by staying busy. As I mentioned before, women, um, in the last video, women who returned to work, exercise, and went on about their daily routines had more successful outcomes than women who stayed home and laid in bed for a week and a half. Um, meditation and breathing exercises can help bring your stress levels down and can help promote rational thinking. Uh, during IVF, you will have crazy mood swings from all these hormone meds, uh, so you'll f you will feel stress and anxiety creep in. So as, as soon as you do feel that coming on, um, take a moment, take some deep breaths. Uh, meditation before bedtime can help you relax and also fall asleep faster. Have a plan B. Positive thoughts are important, but... You also need to be realistic that there's a possibility the transfer could fail or you could have an early miscarriage. Um, you need to prepare for whatever happens, good or bad. Um, you and your partner need to have a plan of what to do if the transfer fails or a miscarriage happens. Um, do you have another embry embryo to transfer? If so, when? Uh, do you want to do another egg retrieval? Um, if you feel you can't do another round of IVF, what options do you have? Do you want to use a donor egg or donor sperm? Do you want to look into a different doctor or clinic? Do you want to maybe consider adoption? Positive thoughts are good, but you want to organize your thoughts. First, by identifying the worries that you have. And second, by examining your worries. Third, reframing your thought patterns by asking yourself, uh, what do you want to think about instead of worrying and see how far you've come to this point. Um, fourth, communicate your feelings with your partner or a close friend. Fifth, record your thoughts in a journal. Um, sixth, don't say if. Don't say if I get pregnant. Don't say that. Say when I get pregnant. Uh, uh, using the word if uh, has negative connotation. Um, while the uh, while using the word when does not and is a little more certain. Uh, seventh, don't forget to take care of your health, your physical health affects your mental health and mental health affects your physical health. Eighth, look for spiritual guidance or support. Um, if you are religious, reading from scripture or praying may help. Um, if that helps you, then great, do that. Um, and ninth, take it one day at a time. Just one day at a time. 
Don't think about, you know, 10 days from now. Don't think about, you know, a month from now or even a year from now. Think about what are you going to do today and maybe what are you going to do tomorrow. Um, sleep is important to your physical and mental health. You need at least seven or eight hours of sleep every night. Um, here are some tips uh, to help you sleep. No caffeine after lunch. Avoid long naps in the afternoon. Short 10, 20 minute, you know, power nap is okay. Uh, regular exercise, acupuncture. Uh, keep your room nice and cool. Keep your room dark and quiet. Um, a white noise machine or, or soft music might help for some. Uh, limit fluids before bedtime. Uh, stay away from electronic screens for at least an hour before bedtime. Uh, stick to a normal bedtime and wake up time routine. Meditate or do breathing exercises before bedtime. And if all else fails, take uh, Tylenol PM or Unisom to help you sleep. These are safe to take during pregnancy. In fact, Unisom might reduce some nausea. Uh, talk to your friends, family, therapists, join a support group. Um, if one in eight couples in the U.S. have infertility, then you are not alone. There's a pretty good chance you know someone who went through this. And there are plenty of support groups online. Um, often your clinic may have a support group for patients undergoing fertility treatment. Communication is key um, to better understanding the situation and how to cope with the situation. Um, it is not easy for me to talk about this and then share it to everyone on social media, but I know I'm not alone. And sharing my experience may help someone else going through this. And it also educates the general public so that they know what IVF is and how common it is after decades of couples suffering in silence, but no more. Uh, these voices need to be heard. And lastly, um, yoga. Yoga can uh, help control your breathing and calm you down while clearing your mind. Uh, gently stretching your body and increasing flexibility. Now, here's some things you will want to avoid. Um, especially during that 10-day waiting period uh, to see, to get your pregnancy results. One, no caffeine. Two, don't go to baby showers or gender reveal parties. Um, do, don't consult Dr. Google for your questions. You'll just go down a rabbit hole that will bring you more anxiety. Just contact your doctor or nurse for questions. Um, take a break from social media. The last thing you need is to see another pregnancy announcement or somebody posting pictures of their babies. Um, don't change your daily routine. Um, don't be jealous of other people who are pregnant and have children. Um, don't plan names for your baby or what theme the nursery should be. You'll get to all that good stuff later. Um, don't dwell on negative thoughts. Um, avoid the baby aisle in the stores. And don't, whatever you do, don't do the home pregnancy tests. Some of these tests can pick up a positive test, you know, 10 days or later after transfer. And some can do it as early as five days after transfer. And I see so many women do this and it really messes with their heads. So no matter how tempting it is, don't test at home. The last thing you need to see is another negative pregnancy test. So wait until you get your beta results and if, it is a positive pregnancy test from the beta, then you can have the satisfaction of getting the positive pregnancy test at home. Okay. That is an emotional roller coaster, but that's how IVF is. Um, so the next video will be next week and it'll be on uh, my mid cycle appointment and uh, starting on progesterone.